Welcome to the video broadcast of Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church with pastor and teacher, Rev. Dr. Randall Kane Jr. Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church is located at 101 North Donleith Avenue in Winston-Salem. Please sit back and enjoy this message already in progress. Beloved, um, I'm honored to stand before you right now. I'm honored every single time someone gives me the opportunity to eulogize one of their loved ones. It's a noble, blessed burden to do something like this. You see, I stood before you on February 8, 2023. On February 8, 2023, I was honored to deliver the eulogy for my father-in-law, my father in love, Deacon Emeritus Harvey Rory. Today I stand before you on July 15, 2024 with the honor of delivering the eulogy for his brother. Yes. His brother, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. Amen. These two men, giants in the history of Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, giants in their families, giants in the community, shared a common giant in their lives, their mother, Sister Annie Rory. Amen. Affectionately known as Mama Annie who proved that raising sons without a father in the home as her husband and their father, brother Sam Rory, transitioned early in their marriage, leaving her with two young sons to raise, showing that it can be done if you have God on your side and hear me right, and you stay on the side of God. When I came before you with the eulogy, the good words regarding the life of Deacon Emeritus Harvey Rory, God led me to a message entitled, Fired Up and Ready to Go. On this day, God has also given me a message. A message I believe to be fitting for the life of Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. Amen. Please join me as we spend a little time celebrating the life of Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. with the good word spoken over his life, the eulogy entitled, Finishing Well finishing well. Beloved, when you look at the totality of someone's life, certain things stand out. And when you add all of those things up, a person's life simply <laughs> makes sense. You see, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. played many roles in his life that led him to a particular moment in his life. He was a son. He was a brother. He was a father. He was a husband. He was an uncle. He was a cousin, he was a grandfather, he was a great-grandfather, he was a great, great-grandfather. He was an Atkins High School camel, he was a Marine, and I'm scared to say this, but he was a North Carolina A&T State University Aggie. We had to get that out the way. He was a teacher, he was a Mason, and in the Kairos timing, of God, he was a deacon in the church where he was a charter member, Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. Beloved, of all the roles that he played, it was this last role that was a capstone revelation of the type of man that he truly was. You see, beloved, a deacon is one of the most honorable positions that you can hold in the Baptist church and denomination. One of only two ordained offices, reverend and deacon. You have to be chosen, you do not just show up. You have to be called, you do not just volunteer. You have to be qualified, you do not just become a willing placeholder because the church cannot find a worthy stakeholder. And beloved, as a deacon, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was chosen, called, and qualified as a stakeholder in the kingdom of God, not a placeholder in the kingdom of men and women. It was not unlike the call of the first deacons revealed in Acts 6 and 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom you we may appoint over this business. Beloved, these seven men were to be the first deacons of what we now call the church. Of these first deacons, the first of the first deacons was a man named Stephen, of which it was said in Acts 6 and 5, he was a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, to which was added in Acts 6 and 8, and power. Beloved of Stephen, it was said that he was honest, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, full of faith, and full of power. If I could take some creative license, 
which since I'm up here speaking, I can. I think I could slip out the name Stephen and replace it with the name Henry Thomas Rory Sr. and say the same things about him that he, Henry Thomas Rory Sr., was honest. Somebody say amen. amen. That he, Henry Thomas Rory Sr., was full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Catch on. That he, Henry Thomas Rory Sr., was full of wisdom. Uh-huh. Amen. That he, Henry Thomas Rory Sr., was full of faith. Amen. And that he, Henry Thomas Rory Sr., was full of power. Amen. How do I know? How do we know? Well, beloved, look at the evidence. You see, when I sat down and spent time with this wonderful family, Amen. This wonderful family that I am honored to be a part of through my marriage to his niece, my wife, the First Lady of Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, First Lady Cynthia Rory came. They told me about this man. Beloved, like Stephen, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was an honest man. Beloved, when I spoke with Tremaine Rory, the grandson who was raised as one of his own children with Tremaine's mother, Jackie, for which the Jacqueline Rory Higgins Scholarship Fund is named here at Zion Memorial when she transitioned when Tremaine was 15. He said that his grandfather was real and that he did not lie. Understanding the words of Proverbs 18 and 21, that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So he chose to speak life into Tremaine and to speak life into others. And perhaps, just perhaps, part of what made Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. this way was revealed in his love of Westerns, which he enjoyed watching. You see, beloved, with Westerns, one thing is made quite clear. Who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? Said another way, right and wrong was never up for grabs with the Westerns. You knew who wore the white hats and who wore the black hats. Amen. The simplicity of the Westerns was similar to the simplicity of the gospel music that he also enjoyed. Being in church all the time. He knew that gospel meant good news. And the music helped to keep his mind stayed on Jesus, who he had given his life to at an early age. You don't have to wait till you done done all your wrong before you change your way of life. Amen. He enjoyed a strong bond and relationship with his brother, Deacon Emeritus Harvey Rory. And it was not unusual for you to find them hunting and fishing together as sportsmen seeking to become better huntsmen and fishermen while also bettering themselves as Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 19 as fishers of men as they both sought to help grow the kingdom of God. And beloved, the success that he had in the fields and streams of the forests, lakes and ponds paled in comparison to the success that he had in the classroom. His daughter, Dr. Ramona Griffin Noble, remarked how much respect he was given by his peers and the students at Kennedy Junior High School, especially those students, those young men in his industrial arts classes, who would say, Mr. Rory, don't play. And he don't play. Now, he fair, but he don't play. But also sharing how much they enjoyed being in his classes. Beloved, that sense of fairness and honesty came from a perspective of him desiring to see others be and do their best as his children felt the right kind of parental pressure, amen, to do their best because of the respect that he, their father, had garnered from the other teachers. You see, that's the risk and that's the problem of being a teacher in the school system and having children. Your kids can't get away with nothing. They show up, they say, ain't you so-and-so's son? Ain't you so-and-so's daughter? Well, I know I ain't gonna have a problem out of you because I know your mom and dad. But it made them want to do well because their father had done well. Amen. Amen. And beloved, his consistency of character was noted by his son-in-law, his son-in-law, R.J. Noble, who said that he dropped all of those in-law conventions and just called his father-in-law, his father-in-law, dad. As he remarked how he had met the love of his life, Ramona, over 40 years ago. And the man who he met, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr., was the same man later in life as he was when he met him at those first encounters. A man who told him three key things. Put God first. Amen. A man who told him that God is always right. Amen. And a man who told him that people may let you down. Don't we all know that to be true? Uh, But God never will. Beloved Stephen, like Stephen, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was a man full 
of the Holy Ghost. Evidence of the Holy Ghost revealing a feeling of the part of the Holy Trinity known as God, the Holy Spirit, was spoken of by Tremaine when he talked about how Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. would pray. Y'all talked about him being silent, but when he prayed, he said it was like someone waiting on something incredible to happen. Tremaine remember how when called upon Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. would pray in a way the atmosphere would change. With a praise to God going up and a breath, blessing seeming to come down, amen. Meeting the people right where they were and causing them to sway as he prayed, amen. As if the Holy Spirit were moving them, inspiring them to echo, amen, as he prayed. As if the Holy Spirit was speaking to them, causing the people to feel something. As he prayed, as if the Holy Spirit were filling them. His own feeling of the Holy Ghost was revealed in the seriousness in which he carried himself. Something about him and his brother. They just lived in the scripture. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child, I did as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. You see, it was something about him, always knowing who he was, always knowing whose he was, always knowing what he believed was best to do, and then daring, because some of us know what's right, we just won't dare to do it. But he knew what was right, and then he dared to do what was right, amen. You see, beloved, Ramona and the family remark on the patience that he always seemed to show, having just a peace about it. In Philippians 4 and 7, peace, a peace that passed all understanding. And beloved, then Thomas, the grandson carrying his grandfather's and his father's name, noted how they would go to K&W cafeteria after church on Sundays, amen, and how the mere presence of his grandfather caused the workers' countenance to lighten, smiles to come on their faces, and extra food to get on their place. <laughs> and it was all because of him, because of him, because they didn't do this for anybody else. In line, he used to make other folk mad at KW. But why he getting three pieces of chicken and I'm getting two? When they say you only get two, do you want one? Keep talking. <laughs> Beloved, like Stephen, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was a man full of wisdom. With a voice commanding attention, Tremaine remembered how his grandfather spoke with a death that started with the ear and reached all the way down to the spirit as he spoke words of wisdom, giving advice as his son, Zion's own deacon, Tom Rory Jr., would share while always understanding that sometimes experience is the best teacher. Amen. And as he believed that as we all go through life experiences, he also knew that words of conviction, hear me right, words of conviction lead to repentance, a changing of mind to change life for the better, but they should always outweigh and outnumber words of condemnation. Beloved, it's hard to lift somebody up when you've been spending so much time breaking them down. And so we try to build people up, amen. And in sharing his wisdom, he was a builder and shaper of men. Men like Thomas, who saw how his grandfather helped to shape his personality with consistent discipline for those wreckfully jumping on beds. <laughs> a work ethic that caused him to care for several generations of elders in the family. Working without complaining, I never heard the man complain to make sure that the job was well done and done well as he taught his family the value of work. As a house needs a strong foundation, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. generously shared the wisdom that he had gone through God over the years. Beloved, like Stephen, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was a man full of faith. As defined by Hebrews 11 and 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen, whether the day was good or bad, hear me right. If it was a Sunday, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was at church. And to be clear, for Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr., church was Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. He wasn't a bunny rabbit Christian hopping from here, there, and everywhere. This was his church, and this is where he came that faith in God made him a man to be followed as his faith 
was not simply one of words, but more so faith revealed in action. He showed his faith in supporting his family through health and sickness with the love he showed to his own mother, Sister Annie Rory, with the love he showed to his own wife, Sister Lorraine Rory, with the love he showed to his wife's stepfather, Brother Prentice Smith, all who he cared for day and night, making himself available to their beck and call and need, trusting that with God, as a Philippians 4 and 13 Christian, he could do all things through Christ who strengthened him. And as a Galatians 6 and 9 Christian, that he need not be weary and well doing, for he would reap. And by your presence, he is reaping. Because, beloved, he did not faint in his well doing. He did not faint for a beloved like Stephen, Deacon, and Meredith, as Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was a man full of power. When his daughter, Jackie transitioned, leaving in this world her 15-year-old son, Jermaine. Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. became the father to his grandson, who some would say, well, you're the grandfather, and who Tremaine's own birth father said, no, that was your daddy. He had the power to look at you. We've already heard about the look, to look at you. And you know the look. Y'all know the look. Not yelling at you, but just looking at you. And you knew what time it was without you having to look at your watch. But when he spoke, as Ramona shared, it was like the old E.F. Hutton commercials. Huh. Where when Deacon and Mary and Henry Rory Thomas Sr. spoke, huh, people listened. I listened when he asked me to consider becoming a candidate to pastor the great and growing Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. A position, of, a position of leadership and authority that I had never considered until he spoke to me. He spoke to me. And I was blessed with his powerful words to help empower my own ministry in leading this great church and congregation. And beloved with family as his granddaughter, Lauren, shared. He was so supportive of his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Amen. As he extended love and kindness to them by making what was important to them important to him. Giving his time, giving his talent, giving his treasure, as he wanted to make sure that they knew how important they were to him. And also, beloved, his warmth and care made him have an open spirit, an open heart, an open mind, and an openness in what he said and did by offering to be a way maker for those in positions of need. In a world where power is sometimes revealed by what people think that they can destroy. Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. exercised his power to show love to family, church, community, and strangers, such as his respect, given and shown while it was well earned and well deserved. Beloved, to say it simply, he started well. To say it simply, he lived well. So well that I cannot fit it all in this moment that we have together. But beloved, the title of this message, this eulogy, these good words spoken about Deacon Emeritus, Henry Thomas Rory Sr. is finishing well. In finishing well, in his latter days, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. had some struggles in his health. Amen. Struggles that mimic the struggles that the first deacon, Stephen, experienced in his relationship with the Jewish people. The Jewish people hated Stephen for being a deacon who was honest, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, faith, and power. So they decided to destroy the man as if they could destroy the honesty, the Holy Ghost, the wisdom, the faith, and the power. And beloved, Stephen's response was revealed in Acts 7, 55, and 56. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Beloved Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr., he entered what I call the spiritual 4-H club. I've known a few members such as my own mother, Alma Cain, and my father in love, Deacon Emeritus Harvey Rory, who are members of the spiritual 4-H club. That spiritual 4-H club is those who went from home to the hospital, from the hospital to hospice, and then from hospice to heaven. Amen. That is where those in the spiritual 4-H club end up in finishing well in heaven. For you see, as Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. was at home in the hospital and in hospice, 
He prayed. He sang. And he testified. You might have thought that he was singing to and with you. That might have been true. But do know for certain he was praying to God. He was finishing well. He might have thought that he was simply singing in to you and, and with you, but that might have been true, but do know for certain he was singing to God. He was finishing well. You might have thought he was testifying to you, edifying you. That might be true, but do know for certain that he, beloved, was testifying to and edifying God. He was finishing well. And beloved, when you saw him looking skyward, seeing what you could not see, do know for certain that he was looking from this side of glory to the other side of glory. The other side of glory where God dwells, beloved, he was finishing well. And beloved, when the doctors decided that there was no more that they could do for him, that was fine with Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. As he said, as Stephen said in Acts 7 and 59, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He was finishing well. And then, beloved, on Tuesday morning at 2 a.m., as Stephen rested from his challenges on this side of glory, Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. rested from his as well as Acts 7 and 60 tells us he fell asleep. He finished well. And beloved, when he fell asleep on this side of glory, he awoke, he awoke, he awoke on the other side of glory. Yes. Leaving behind a life worth speaking good words over with a eulogy. Leaving behind a life worth emulating by seeking to follow his witness and his example. Leaving behind a life worth remembering like a song, a song like some folks would rather have houses and land. Some folks choose silver and gold. These things they treasure and forget about their souls. But he decided to make Jesus his choice. He could honestly say the road is rough and the going gets tough. He could go on with the Holy Spirit despite knowing and the hill a hard to climb. With the wisdom of timeless God, he started out a long, long time ago. And by having faith in God, there was no doubt in his mind. With power, his life declared, he decided to make Jesus his choice. And beloved, he would want you to do the same by looking at the storms that you face in your life. By looking at everything that you have to go through. By recognizing sometimes people, places, and things will betray you. And then declaring, the road is rough. The going gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. I started out a long time ago. And there's no doubt in my mind. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Can you help me out with that church? The road is rough and the going is tough and the hills are hard to climb. Come on, church. I started out a long time, time ago and there is no doubt in my mind to make Jesus my choice. Just say that last part again. I've decided to make Jesus my choice.
Beloved, I want you to think about that last verse. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Something, beloved, might have been said during this service. A song might have been sang. A word might have been prayed. And somebody in here right now who's been struggling with, what should I do next? I want to save you. We're honoring a man who decided to make Jesus his choice. If you right now are ready to do the same, I say to you that the doors of the church are now open. That you come and your life will change forever. The man who you may be crying about, the man who you may be remembering, would want you to make that decision to make Jesus your choice. If there is one right now, I invite you, encourage you to come now. Tomorrow is not promised. You've got today. Make the decision that will change your tomorrow forever. If there's one, come now. Come now. Come now. Beloved, the good words have been spoken over the good life of this good man. Deacon Emeritus Henry Thomas Rory Sr. Amen. Amen. Now, beloved, you have to decide if you are going to truly honor him or just remember him. It may sound the same, but it's really not. You see, if you're going to just remember him, then you have your special celebrations from time to time and you lift up his name. That's what some people do. But if you want to honor him, if you want to honor him, then seek to live as he did. That is what he would have you to do. Family, that's what he would have you to do. Friends, and how did he live? He decided to make Jesus his choice. And by doing so, beloved, he finished well. Amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in to the radio broadcast of Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church with pastor and teacher, Rev. Dr. Randell Kane Jr. It is our prayer that this message inspires you to further your walk with Christ. For more information about Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, go to our website, zmmbc.net, or call 336-725-7390. We live stream our services on our Facebook page. Just search for Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church page. Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church is located at 101 North Donleith Avenue in Winston-Salem. Be blessed and continue to further your walk with Christ.